Supreme Master Television. Estamos en un nuevo programa de vegetarianismo, el estilo de vida noble. Mi nombre es Magdalena y estoy con Vicente. Hola amigos. Con Vicente vamos a preparar un plato de algas marinas que es una ensalada de algas marinas y para ello vamos a ocupar los siguientes ingredientes. Bueno, primero que nada vamos a necesitar cochayuyo, ulte, pimentón, cebollines, cilantro, lechuga, semillas de sésamo, sal de mar, tomates, jugo de limón, zanahoria, papas y un diente de ajo. Esta alga marina que está generalmente en Sudamérica, en las costas de acá del Pacífico, Usted tal vez en el, en el mercado la puede encontrar en bolsita ya prepicada. Entonces lo que yo hice fue hidratarlo durante una hora, lo, lo lavé y lo dejé en agua. Luego lo estilo y me queda de esta manera. Entonces ahora vamos a hacer una, una mezcla con lo, las verduras que vamos a, a incorporarle a estas algas. Ya, entonces, ¿qué te parece si tú empiezas a picar finito los cebollines y yo pico los, los pimentones? Pica lo que te quede lo más fino posible. Esto viene en una bolsita y yo puse la mitad de la bolsa. Y esto más o menos alcanzaría como para una familia de unas seis personas. Van a ver que no solamente vamos a, comer, a consumir lo crudo, ensalada, sino que también podemos ocuparlo para rellenar algunas cosas. Después lo va dejando ahí. Perfecto. Y yo voy a picar los pimentones. Mientras nosotros picamos, vamos a incorporarle el jugo de tres limones para que se impregne bien. Eh, el cochayuyo en especial, en particular, eh, tiene altas cantidades de yodo, así como de calcio y de fibras. También es alto en, en valor proteico, por lo que es un muy buen sustituto de los alimentos de origen animal. Sé sí que cura bastante enfermedades, ¿eh? Así es. Entre otras cosas, reduce el colesterol previene la, el estreñimiento y es un buen controlador del peso. Algo fundamental hoy en día con la obesidad infantil. Claro. Eh, claro el cochayuyo sí. se puede preparar eh, en platos como charquicán. Eh, si se tuesta un poco así el cochayuyo seco, Uh -huh. eh, se muele y, y se espolvorea en, en alguna preparación. También se ocupa eh, para sustituir la sal. Eh, y se puede mantener en un frasco. Entonces, si usted va a alinear cualquier cosa, una ensalada o darle sabor a alguna comida, lo puede tener y, y no usar la sal, que en realidad la sal común eh, es tan dañina y... Mmm, en cambio, eh, tiene inmediatamente ahí el aporte de yodo que necesitamos. Creo que es un, un, un pequeño dato que les puede servir. ¿Mm? Bueno, también el cochayuyo es muy bueno para las personas que sufren de hipertiroidismo. Así como para las personas que sufren de bocio y de... Y así es estomacal. Ah, mira qué bueno. Ajá. Te voy a ayudar un poco con el cebollín. Lo hiciste bastante finito, está súper bien. 
Yo lo hice un poco más grueso, entonces ahí vamos a mezclar. Si quieres, me, me colocas tu... Y lo vamos eh, volteando para que el limón vaya impregnando. Se van mezclando los colores. Perfecto. El ajito ahora. Muy bien. Esto ya se está viendo bastante bonito. Si ustedes lo pueden ver, le voy a agregar un poquitito más de rojo para que se vea aún mejor. El pimentón es bastante saludable también. Sirve bastante para la coagulación de la sangre. Y esta vez lo vamos a consumir crudo. Tenemos listo el ajito. Está. Perfecto. Gracias, Vicente. Entonces esto lo vamos a dejar reposar para que el limón haga lo suyo. Y durante unos minutitos nada más, unos 5 o 10 minutos, uh -huh. para que se macere todo. Estamos de regreso con Vegetarianismo, el estilo de vida noble. Vamos a concluir nuestra preparación de hoy, que era la ensalada de algas. Dejamos macerando esto y ahora le vamos a agregar un poco de sal marina para irle dando un poco de sabor. Esto no necesita mucho ya que el cochayuyo ya es un poco salado. Ahora vamos a hacer unos bonitos platos y para eso vamos a requerir de que Vicente nos pele unas papitas que están previamente cocidas. Perfecto. Por supuesto que la fruta y verduras, todo lo que está acá está lavado, está en punto de ocuparse. Tengo mis tomates que yo los voy a preparar para adornarlo mientras Vicente me pela la, las papitas. Vamos a huecar unos tomates. Mira qué bien. Sí. ¿Dónde voy dejando las papitas? Déjala ahí mientras. Perfecto. Voy a... a ver que mis tomates queden paraditos. Uh -huh. Ahí tengo uno. Bueno, mencionar que este es un plato crudívoro, ¿no? Bueno, excepto por las Va, papas. Vamos a hacer una parte crudívora y la otra eh, mezclada. Con... Ah, ya, perfecto, perfecto. Vamos a hacer uno para las personas que son crudívoras. Uh -huh. Y así todos pueden consumirlo. Los veganos y los crudívoros. Ya. Ahora vamos a... A empezar con nuestro adorno. La lechuguita, por supuesto, orgánica, lavadita. Están listas para nuestra presentación. Voy a poner una más. Ahí. Le vamos a colocar un poquitito de aceite de pepita de boba, para que quede más suave. Uh -huh. Ahora sí, ya tiene como un aroma. Un aroma amar. 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 lo dejas abajo no Perfecto. y vas a hacer una misión imposible 
cuénteme. Vas a partir la papita por el centro y la vas a huecar un poco. ¿Te parece si puedes hacerlo? Vamos ¿Te a bonito? Sí. sí. Los hombres son súper habilosos en la cocina, así que yo creo que tú lo vas a hacer súper bien. ¿Por la mitad? Sí. Por la mitad. Bien. Y le vas a sacar un poco de, el interior. De manera que podamos ahí colocar nuestra preparación. Mm. ¿Difícil? No mm, tanto. Es que la práctica es el maestro. <risa> Bien dicho. ¿Te lo viene ahí? Eh, sí. Sí, porque si no se te va a romper. Perfecto, vamos a dejarlas ahí. Hey, entonces yo voy a empezar a, a rellenar mis... Tomates. Tomate. Tengo un caso para rellenar bastante tomatito. Se ve muy bueno, ya me está dando apetito. ¿Así? Así es. Vamos a esperar un momento para, para degustar. Bueno, este es un plato ideal para el verano, supongo yo. Mm, Por... Yo diría que en toda ocasión a uno le viene bien un... Poner un poquito de sésamo a la lechuga. O cortar un poquitito más de, de calcio al plato. Y el aceite. Esta vendría siendo una, una idea de cómo podría servirse nuestra ensalada de alga. Para las personas que son crudas y veganas, y yo las voy a disponer así como... Si quiere pica un poquitito de lechuga y la ponemos acá. Perfecto. La pica finita. El orden de los factores no altera el producto. Ah, que mientras quede picada, está bien. ¿Así? ¿Sí? No. Está bien. Se pueden rellenar palta, fondos de alcachofa, uh -huh. todo lo que se le ocurra. ¿Zapallos italianos también? ¿Sí? ¿No? Sí, pero igual tendrían que ser previamente cocidos. ¿Dónde ¿No está la lechuga? Ya. La lechuguita la vamos a poner aquí, en el medio. Mm, ¡Qué ¿Sí? hermoso! Ahí va tomando forma de nuestro otro plato. Vamos a agregar un poquitito de... De sésamo a la lechuguita. Acá tenemos el plato que es para los crudos y veganos, completamente crudo. Y este es una mezcla que mmm, puede ser con papas cocidas, también lo puede hacer crudo y vegano con palta, con fondito de alcachofa. Y ustedes agregarle algo de su imaginación, pueden hacer otra variedad. Y por supuesto que esto lo pueden usar como ensalada, en acompañamiento de un arroz, un puré, lo que ustedes gusten. Tiene una, una gran variedad de acompañamiento y les queda bastante rico. Ojalá les haya gustado. Nosotros hacemos lo posible por agradarles y por que ustedes puedan practicar algo saludable. Y, bueno, Sin sufrimiento animal. <ríe> es lo más importante. Bueno amigos, nos despedimos, eh, espero que practiquen el plato y mmm, los esperamos nuevamente en Vegetarianismo, el estilo de vida noble, el Supreme Master de Levita.
My name is Christine Vardaros and I am a professional cyclocross racer. Cyclocross is, a, is the fastest growing cycling discipline right now and it's kind of a combination. You ride what looks like a road bike but it actually has like knobby mountain bike wheels on it and you ride it off-road and it's just the hardest thing in the world. From the first moment to the last moment you cross the finish line it's it's just absolute agony and that's what I do. Sporty viewers, in today's Vegetarian Elite, we will meet professional U.S. cyclist Christine Vardaros, who is also a freelance journalist, advocate for animals and the environment, and a dedicated vegan. A vegetarian for 21 years and a vegan for 11, Ms. Vardaros is a veteran in health-conscious living. She began her cycling career in 1995 in New York City, where she quickly achieved professional status as a mountain bike rider in 1998. One year later, she switched her focus to cyclocross, a grueling form of cycling that involves rugged terrain, obstacles, and cyclists carrying their bicycles up steep slopes. Sometimes you're racing five, six days a week, and uh, and it gets it gets really tough mentally just to stand at the start line, get yourself ready to go again, and and especially when the races don't go well as you as you planned, it's yeah it, you really take a mental blow, and that's where you kind of have to put a foot down and say, okay, I I can do this, and and you start pulling energy from places you never even thought you could just to make it on the start line again and get the morale high enough. So, and for the physical part, I mean, cyclocross is the hardest cycling discipline and it just demands so much of your body. You have to be good at running and you have to be good at biking. And every few seconds in the race, you're sprinting out of a turn. So if you're, if you're not careful, you can really wear yourself down into the ground. Is there sometimes a way that you can get your energy up? Um, well, I do it spiritually. I do feel that there's a higher energy out there. I also believe that everything, everything in this planet and the universe is attached by energy. And to be able to pull from that energy, it's, it's kind of like, uh, like the ocean. Th you know, if the ocean is energy, for instance, there's always enough energy for me. So if I pull from that, there's still enough for everything else in the universe to have energy as well. So I do, I do things like that mentally, mental visualization. Christine is currently competing in the 2011 summer season in Belgium, where cyclocross has gained increased popularity over the years. Throughout her career, she has enjoyed numerous achievements and successes, including running her own professional mountain biking and pro cyclocross teams. But her gratifying moments have come when representing her country on the world stage. I'm proud to have been named to the U.S. national team to race a bunch of World, world Cups and even World Championships a few times. There's something special about not only competing against the best in the world, but representing your country. And I've also won quite a few races that I didn't think that I could have won. One time was after I broke my ankle. And yeah, three weeks later, like magic, I was completely healed. And I just went into the race thinking, ah, what the heck, I'll just do it for fun. And, and I won. I couldn't believe it. Christine Verderos has always been a heroic advocate of a drug-free lifestyle, especially when it comes to sports. Her strength and stamina are shining examples of living a pure life, free from the many dangers and downfalls of drugs. I've never, never taken drugs. In fact, I'm part of uh, Bike Pure. It's an international organization um, supporting, uh, you know, riding your bike without drugs. It's based in Ireland, and um, and the reason why I support groups like that is because um, riding your bike, uh, even without drugs, just the sport alone tears your body up so much. But at least I could say that my insides will be good, you know, that, I, that my health will be good. At least I won't have that, that internal damage. And I believe that if you do it drug-free and if you never get in the habit when you're younger, that you'll be surprised how far you can go. 
on just your own energy. And then also your, your wins, your accomplishments, you'll feel so much better about it. And to, to live clean in your mind is also really important for, for an athlete. Christine's daily routine certainly involves clean vegan fuel to sustain her intense training. I have my, my big bowl of uh, oats or muesli or something and, uh, with an apple and a banana and sometimes flaxseed when I can remember. And then check my emails, get on the bike, go maybe for one hour ride, three hour ride. On the off season, I go to the fitness center about three times a week. If it's a hard training, then I'll lie on the floor with my legs against the wall, like completely upright uh, for about 20 minutes to, to let the legs drain. Oh, and before that, I take my recovery shake. To keep up the mental and physical strength required from such a demanding sport, Christine has a special recipe for success. She follows a health-conscious vegan diet. Actually, before I made the decision to be vegetarian, I actually already gave up pork. I gave up pork about oh, 26 years ago. And I did that because my sister just died and she was only three years old. And and after that, like maybe two weeks later, we had to dissect a pig in, in school. We all had our own little pig and it was just, oh, it just broke my heart. It was like a dead baby. I didn't see that it was a, a human or an animal. It was a dead baby. And that just, so I, from that day, I never ate um, pigs again. Absolutely never, nothing with pigs in it. And then 21 years ago, on a whim, my girlfriend and I were sitting at, sitting at dinner at a restaurant and, uh, and she turns to me and she said, well, let's be vegetarian. We could feed the world four times over, save the planet, and what do you say? And I, I said, yeah, that's great, let's do it. Five years later, I got into cycling and uh, I was pretty darn thankful for being a vegetarian because I noticed that I was able to recover faster. I had no problems losing weight. It's, yeah, it was just a dream. Christine found that her new diet gave her an edge over her competitors, and she then decided to take her diet to the next level. I thought, ah, okay, if being a vegetarian gives me, gives me such an advantage, you know, it gives me a, a few health benefits, maybe if I went vegan, that, who knows, maybe if I cut out more things from animals, and I did all my research, hundreds of hours of research, and finally I decided I'm going to be a vegan. And uh, soon enough, all my symptoms went away. I was able to breathe better. I just, yeah, I felt, I felt fresh. I felt recovered. I, everything was just, it was magical. I was able to, to do hard races and then the next day feel, feel recovered again, which is a real dream because that also means I can do hard trainings and the next day I can do a hard training, but my meat eating, you know, coworkers, they can't, it's, it's harder for them. And, uh, and another benefit of a vegan diet is I'm almost never sick. That means that, yeah, more days training, more days racing, I can be a better athlete. I can get more done in a day. I also have just as much energy as I had when I was in my teens. That's insane, that's 20 years ago. It's like, how can that be? And yeah, I can on the diet. The results of the vegan diet were speaking for themselves and were soon being noticed by others, including her doctor. I broke my ankle, or broke my leg actually, and they, they really, the doctor told me six weeks, yours is a bad crack, six weeks. Three weeks later it was completely healed, 100% healed. He pulled my coach aside, at the, um, who was at the, at the appointment. And he said, what did she do? And he said, yeah, well, she's on a vegan diet, you know, and that's, and she kept her protein count low. And that's the secret. And uh, he, he was just absolutely shocked. My, my coach is actually vegan too. And, uh, and he's, he usually has about like 50 to 70 clients or something. And he, 
actually talks most of them into going vegan. So there are quite a few vegan cyclists out there. Quite a few of my cycling friends have actually turned vegan or cut their meat because of, because of what they've seen the diet have on me, the effect it's had on me. A true vegan hero, Christine is a tireless campaigner for promoting awareness in health and the protection of animals. She is a spokesperson for In Defense of Animals, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, and Organic Athlete, a group of athletes who live an organic, vegan lifestyle. Christine is also a freelance journalist, contributing to various publications and magazines, including Cyclocross Magazine and CyclingNews.com. Actually, when I became vegan was where I really, you know, put my fist on the, on the table and said, I'm going to be a writer, and I'm going to be a writer, so in that way I can share the, the real truth with people, the truth about protein, the truth about your body, the truth about exercise, the truth about anything. Like, for instance, one trick that I, uh, that I shared with the readers is beet juice. That's something that, that people are just now starting to pick up in the athletic world. If you drink 500 milliliters of beet juice every day, it actually helps your endurance by some say 16%, some say 20. Organic beet juice actually. Um, a common misconception that, that people are always uh, approaching me about is the, the, the old question, how do you get your protein? I find that just so, just so pitiful that that this misconception is out there that, that you need so much protein. In fact, um, in my diet, I get six to 10% protein at most. And in fact, when I'm, when I'm going through a hard training period or I'm you know, having an injury, I actually try to keep it you know, like on the lower end for health reasons. So that way I can, I can recover faster so I can heal faster. If people knew the truth that when you drink milk, it actually gives you osteoporosis. And as an athlete, it dehydrates you. It puts a real strain on your body to try to process that. I, yeah, I just think it's so unfortunate that even athletes still think to this day that they need to drink their glass of milk to be healthy when it's, it's doing everything against all the work that they've, they've done to make themselves stronger. One person can make a difference. So I'm happy to be a part of this, this growing generation of people who, you know, who want to take care of their bodies, want to take care of the planet, and you know, want to take care of the animals and, and be kind. A lot of the people in the vegan world are all making an effort and eventually we'll all make the world a better place. You know, we'll save the planet like I thought 21 years ago. And, and will also save, save lives, save people so that, that they can live a healthier life, they can live a longer life, and live life to, to its fullest. Thank you, Christine Vardaros, for being a true hero and a notable example of the outstanding physical benefits of the vegan diet. We wish you continued success in your cycling and all your future endeavors.